Okay, so we're back. This is the third installment of this quick and messy and dirty thing that I like to call scribbling on an iPad. All right, let's get into the third act. In the third act, obviously we go back to, the, you know, two, one, and three. Quick and dirty, let's clean this up. So in the third act, you know, there's two back here. Usually the character is coming in very low, of, you know, in some way. And there's a point here. And then there's a point here. And then obviously you have the resolution. So here, right after that major event that happened here, there's a sequence of events that happens before you get to the climax here. And it's usually the, the main character is at their lowest point and they're like oh my god you know they either try to go back to their old life as best as they can if they're in the same area or the same you know that they were in terms of like location wise or you know they're stuck in this new place and they're like i gotta go home or whatever they want to do they just want to go back because they they felt they made a big mistake or something like that or no one could do anything but then either they or someone helps them rally to go back up and say nope I've experienced all this amazing stuff in the second act and I can't just go back and usually obviously it's a film or a TV show or an episode that's what happens so they push on and it goes like that and it resolves itself typically but all the things you've established in act one are gonna be resolved yes or no here at the climax and all the questions they're asking themselves would be here climax obviously is the big conflict of some kind and the what do you call the denouement or you know the resolution this is all determined here at the end like oh they lived happily ever after or the shawshank the you know andy you know morgan freeman's character finds andy at the beach but all of that has been set up so to get to this point do a beautiful job at the first act as best as you can set up everything you want to see in the first act to get to here to that f question that they're asking that truth do they get what they want or what they need or they get neither and it's like a weird ending because there's a lot of films that either you get what you want or get what you need but what was it i think it was back to the future he gets what he wants and what he needs which it's nice and sweet, but it, for me personally, it's not a type of ending that I really like. It's either they get what they need, which is usually the best thing, because th what they usually wanted in the beginning, it doesn't have to be a negative thing, but it could be something that is not healthy for them, that they assumed they needed, but what they really needed, what they really needed or, you know, what they wanted was the truth, whatever that form, whatever form that is. And coming back to the beginning, obviously, the ghost informs the lie that they believe and in turn informs the want. So in reality, there should be something else that they truly needed, but they didn't resolve it here. So this happened and this happened and so on and so forth. So when you come back, a good for me, a good ending is what they they get what they need. They learn something. They learn the truth that they really needed at the end. You know, so like in, for example, A Christmas Carol, which is very classic, Ebenezer Scrooge gets what he needs, which is to understand that originally it was the value of a man isn't by how much he has, but it's their character, essentially. And they learn that all back there in the second act. So by the end, you should essentially have that in the beginning or the concept of the idea that you want or the question or I'll get into later more detail the theme is really the question you're asking in this whole whatever it is either it's a season it's either a season or a, you know a f one film short film whatever it is usually you're asking a question and you re you answer that in the third act you know the boiling point here and you resolve it and you say hey the more of the it's not usually more of the story but it's kind of like that but without being preachy you know you resolve it as best as you can and if you don't or at least part of it is resolved 
it depends on your style and what you're doing. So let's read the points on like usually what I use. So this is that is right after the second act. You would have the final push. They try to go back to their old identity. You know, you can pause and read this. And yeah, so it's for me when I look at this, it's not one scene, it's a group of scenes. To you don't have, you know, like I said, the number of it doesn't really matter to me. It's up to your thing. And but this is one general scene. And just like the other major points is one scene, obviously. After this is a sequence of scenes to resolve whatever you need to resolve. They live happily ever after, whatever the hell is going on here. You know, Michael Corleone at the end of The Godfather is like, all of this is happening here after this, etc., etc. So resolve everything you can if you can. The arc, you know, determines the real ending. All these aspects. So if you look at... You already know what the climax is, but this point, which is shown up here, is usually not talked about that often when I was doing research and everything like that. There's a few people that talk about it, and I'll comment if you want to comment down below. I will get into more detail in other videos for that. But because when you, in the grand scheme of things, when you look at the structure, typically the obviously the you know they just show this. And you always have midpoint, a climax, and the ending. And typically, they don't even have the time. They don't really talk about this inside the incident that that catapults this character across this whole thing. You know, and the ones that do that's pretty amazing. So, but to get into even more detail, because this might look daunting to a lot of people, is these points. You know, and to break it down one more time, it's a bunch of scenes major point a bunch of scenes major point hop into the side remember this could be closer or further from that actual point and then you have a bunch of scenes and then a major point and then you have a bunch of scenes and then a major point and then this like i said just like over here this could be closer to here it's all up to you and your pacing then here a bunch of scenes trying to rally my old life maybe maybe not okay let's go back fuck this let's do it and then a scene so if it helps you that's how i see it and then a bunch of scenes and then you know the ending of whatever you want to call it. so this messy aspect sorry <laughs> you didn't see that but essentially the messy aspect is one the the, the those are usually single scenes and everything else is a bunch of scenes depending on your pacing and depending on your style these are the points and I'll try my best to put up a worksheet if you guys want that well that's the end of this messy <laughs> messy drawing session till next time peace weirdos